What's up, guys? Oh, I just got stuck in a tangle. So, I uh, here I am again, mid-hair application or mid-hair curling and deciding that I have a topic I need to speak on. So, here we are. I want to talk about money, which nobody wants to talk about money, right? They're like, it's like a big taboo thing. Nobody wants to speak about it. So... I have a few things that I want to say. If you guys are jumping on, I see. Will you let me know if you can hear me okay? Just either hit like or comment below and let me know if you guys can hear me. I really want to talk about the mindset around money. There's a lot more to it than people realize. So, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I know it's strange that I do this while I'm doing my makeup, but hey, it's wasted time. Otherwise, I'm sitting here thinking about all this shit. I might as well share it with you guys, right? Um, all right, so fuck it. I'm just going to start talking. Um, the fact of the matter is, okay, so the header there, like I said, so $1,000. This came up because they have... Thank you, Kyle. You're awesome. I appreciate you. Um... This keeps coming up for some people in my in my world, and, and it brings me back to a time where, like, where I used to also think that I used to freak out about money. So, I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but, like, money used to, like, legit give me anxiety. Just even thinking about it, my bills coming, anything, I would, like, ignore it. It was really bad. It stemmed back to, like, little girl Jamie when she was, like, seven years old kind of thing. And, um... I spent a lot of time, I'm like looking into you guys to do this, that's not normal, let's move the mirror over here. Anyway, I spent um, a lot of time and money on rebuilding my mindset around money, but I now that I've changed it and I'm no longer like freaked out by it, it just makes it more easy for me to notice the language that other people use around money and how they're fucking themselves over because of it. So, here's what I mean. First of all, what you make or what you spend on something is your decision. It's no one else's decision. It's no one else's space to give you grief about, right? It's none of their fucking business, quite honestly. Um, but the other thing is you have to watch your language. Like, if money is the number one, in my opinion and one my experiences, if money is the first thing that you think about, talk about, worry about, you're deflecting it. You're going to keep it away from you because it makes you uncomfortable or it becomes kind of like an obsession and that's defeating the fucking purpose, okay? So the reason this is coming up right now is someone, you know, like invested money and they're like, oh my God, a thousand dollars is so much money. And it made me sound really insensitive for a minute because I was like, $1,000 is not a lot of money to invest in a program. And when I say that, I don't mean to be sound like a dick because I do know that $1,000 is a lot of money. Um, I'm not saying that it's like chump change and that you should just, you know, throw it around. That's not what I mean. But it's a fucking perspective, you guys. It's like a mindset thing around it. So like, if the first thing that you think of when you hear a price is, oh my gosh, that's so expensive... It's out of your, you're, you're never going to allow yourself to have it. Like you're literally, literally already putting like this negative taboo around that price that doesn't even exist. Like you've just created it. Um, so you got to watch your language. And if you start noticing that about yourself, then you need to kind of do a little like inner looking and see like, what's the underlining reason? Why do you feel that way? Because a thousand dollars for, especially like when we're talking like personal development stuff and like investing in yourself, a thousand dollars is not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. It's really not. There are people who are paying a lot more than that. And the majority of your professionals that are actually going to help you are way more expensive than that. Um, you know, you're paying, like I've paid, I don't know, $10,000 for one day. I've paid $10,000 for six weeks. I've paid $1,000 for a month, for a month. I've, you know, paid a lot of different pricing. Obviously, I don't typically, like, trip about the price around that because it's really not about that. It's about the value that you're receiving. It's about the time that you're investing. 
And like I just watched a video this morning. I mean, it obviously really does come down to you and what you're going to do with what you learn. But like you have to watch your language because when you initially your first response is a thousand dollars is a lot of money. Okay. Like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? So it's a lot of money. Cool. Like, why is that your immediate response? You know what I'm saying? Because I believe that you should have respect for money and you shouldn't just throw it around like it's like no big freaking deal because it, it is. But I also believe that your language around it and the way where your brain initially goes is really important. Like, for example, I can give you a great example of this. I was standing in this shop um, a couple weeks ago talking to this guy who is a he's like an energy healer or something. I don't know. He came up and introduced himself to me and I was with someone else and, um, you know, we were talking about what he does for a living and whatever. And I asked him what his pricing was and I've done energy healing with people over the internet, but it was, I wanted to know what he cost, what his price was, you know, whatever he said. I don't know. It was like fucking $50 an hour or like $200 for 90 minutes or something. It was not overly priced. And so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Well, the person I was with, like, instantly shut down. Like, instantly shut down, instantly was like, oh, my God. Well, I mean, if I had that much money, then that, that, that guy would. But, like, that's crazy. Like, he, he lost me at that price. And I thought, like, I watched the energy shift. Like, I watched the energy in our conversation shift. I watched the energy in the room shift. I watched the energy within her shift. Like, her facial expression changed. And she instantly went to a negative place based up off of someone saying a price that to her sounded like a lot. And like, to me, when I see that, like that is not a healthy reaction. I don't care. And I'm not saying, cause I don't have, I'm not saying that you need to have money to throw around. That's not what I'm getting at at all. What I'm getting at is you need to pay attention to the way that you're acknowledging things financially, because if the moment someone says a price, you instantly like cringe or like back off or your instant response is oh my god that's a lot of money and then your whole energy changes like you literally just screwed yourself out of getting information from that person like this dude was like literally just chatting with us and like creating a relationship and when as soon as he said a price when that tone changed with her it like there goes that entire connection and that relationship like it all shifted and it's so stupid. And I'm like, you just fucked yourself over because you decided to focus more on a dollar amount than you did to focus on, on the benefit of it or, or seeing the situation for what it really is versus like, Oh my God, Oh my God, 200 bucks or whatever. What's up, Brandon? Hey, Shane. Yeah. Body language is, is where it's at, dude, for sure. So that's the reason I kind of wanted to bring this up because around the topic of like investing money in yourself, especially, or like making purchases, first of all, it's no one else's decision what you do. It's none of their business, in my opinion. Um, if you want to invest money, like if I haven't disclosed to my like family and friends the amount of money that I spend on myself, like in personal development or in things I need for my business or in like learning new things, shit like that. Like, they'd probably all fucking panic. Like, I can promise you they'd look at me like I had four heads. But guess what? It's not their decision. It's mine. It has nothing to do with them. And the other thing is, and this is, an, again, this is going to make me sound like a prick. So please know that I'm not being, like, I'm not judging anyone for their decisions. I'm just trying to lay out a perspective difference and kind of just show you the difference in thinking. The re other reason that I know that I don't sit there and tell people, oh, hey, this is how much I invest in myself is because they've never done it. They don't know what they don't know. And not knocking anybody else, but like, I don't want to stay in the same place. I don't want to live the same life as everyone around me has lived out. I don't want to follow in everyone else's path. Like I choose to do something different. So I choose to invest my money in myself and in things that people around me have never even fucking heard of because that's what I choose to do. Like it has nothing, it's no one else's decision. And, and I understand that they don't get it, that for me to pay a shitload of money to go sit with a crazy bearded guy in the middle of Utah and ride around in his truck with him all day, like to learn from him, no one grasps that. Like I get that. I don't expect them to understand, but what I need you guys to understand is 
it's not their place to understand. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter. It's not their money. It's not their life. It's not the dream that they're working towards. That's not what matters. Like when it comes down to it, it's your decision on. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people will make their own decisions about everything except for money. They get really like fucking weirded out and they'll like look around like, oh my God, does somebody, somebody's going to think I'm crazy because I'm buying this or I'm investing this money in a program or, or in an event or whatever. And it's like that way of thinking and you worrying about what everyone else thinks about what money you're spending is what's holding you back. It's not about the money. It's a mindset. I promise you, I promise you it is a mindset and it is a mindset shift that you have to make like in order for you to get out of a rut. If, if, and there's a lot of things you can do to overcome those money mindset problems and a lot of ways that you can look at it differently. And that's a topic we can discuss further. If you guys are interested, let me know and I can give you a rundown on what I've done over the past couple of years to shift that for me. Um, in a really big way and take away all those negative feelings. But a lot of it is just becoming really, really aware and really confident in the fact that like what you do has nothing to do with anyone else. Like it's you, it's not them. It's not for them to understand or for them to approve of. Like I remember when I got back from Vegas, the first time I went was about a year ago. Um, I went for a business trip by myself and I think the program that I was in cost me like $6,000 and then I had to pay obviously for like the four day event to be there. I got back and I remember people in my family and people like my friends and stuff kind of looking at me and going, why would you do that? Like, I don't understand. And I'm sitting here going, dude, the fact that you don't understand is exactly why I have to do it because that mentality in my life had to shift in order to give me the things that I wanted, the things that I kept thinking about and seeing that I didn't know how I was going to get, but I wanted to get them. So like I had to make that mindset shift. So it's like almost makes me smile every time somebody's like, how did you do that? Like, I don't understand. How did you, you know, come up with that? Or how did you, why would you go out by yourself? Or why would you invest money in yourself? And like that sort of thing. And it's like, it almost fuels my fire even more because I'm like the fact that you don't get it just means that it's so, so right. Because I don't want to be standing in the same spot that everyone else around me has stood in for 50 years. Not that there's anything wrong with where they're standing. I love them, but I don't want to stand there. I choose not to stand there. So it's a big mindset shift. I remember I came back from, I came back from Utah and I made a post. Me and Sean actually talked about it and he goes, watch, you should post something about how you spent $10,000 for one day in Utah with me. So I did to see the response. And the funniest part about it is, is that nobody said anything initially the people who I know who are on a similar journey to me and who invested a lot of money in themselves, like commended me and cheered and were like, yeah, go Jamie. But the people that are closest to me that I know, um, don't get it. Never, nobody said anything out loud or like on my Facebook, but the, the comments and the questions and the stuff trickled out later. Like, how'd you even do this? Like, Jamie, how did you even do that? And I was like, he has something that I want. So I paid him to teach me how to get it. I paid him to yell at me literally for days <laughs> or not for days, but for hours to get it through my head. Like I wanted, I wanted to go deeper. I wanted more information. He has built something that I want. So I took it to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the point. And again, when I'm trying to explain, like, a $10,000 is a lot of fucking money. It's a lot of fucking money. A lot. But it's my decision. And it's no one else's decision. And it's nothing I have to explain to anyone else. And I can tell you that three years ago, if you would have told me that, I would have panicked at the thought 
of that much money. Like fucking hyperventilated, get me a paper bag, I can't breathe kind of hyperventilated. So like, it's just literally a mindset shift, you guys. Like, so that's why I'm saying, I don't mean to sound like a jackass when I'm like, $1,000 isn't a lot of money because it is a lot of money. But it's all about how you look at it. Like, what are you doing with that $1,000? Oh, and here's the fucking kicker. Oh, my Lanta. Hold on. Emily. Hey, Emily. Yeah, you should rewatch. It's a good one. Um, here's the kicker, ladies and gentlemen. How much money are you losing by not spending that $1,000? How much time are you wasting? How much money are you leaving on the table? Especially you business owners. How much money are you leaving on the table every single day by not investing? Because investing in yourself is the best money you can ever spend. If I wouldn't have invested in my first coach, fuck, I would be nowhere near where I am right now. If I wouldn't have invested in my program with Kat a year ago, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. My program, I'd still be teaching a totally different kind of, of coaching that I hated. I didn't even enjoy it. Like, I didn't even like what I was doing then. You know, like it, it was, it, it was a struggle. It wasn't in alignment. It didn't feel good. I wasn't comfortable. And if I wouldn't have invested that, how much money would I have left on the table? You get what I'm saying? Like if I wouldn't have invested in these experiences and in, and in myself is what it all comes down to is I'm investing in me. I'm not investing in anything besides me. How much money am I leaving on the table? I mean, I know dudes who were banging their freaking heads against the wall for 15 years in a business, they hired a coach. Oh, we're back. Sorry. Somebody trying to call me. Um, they hired a coach and like literally more than doubled their money in like 30 days. Hmm. Interesting. Imagine how much money they had left on the table for 15 years because they were too scared to invest in themselves. They were too scared to to ask somebody to help them to take that leap, put the money on the table and say, teach me, teach me what I need to do to take this business to the next level. Imagine if they would have done that five or 10 years before how much money they would have generated from their company and how much less stress they would have had. Like, let's be serious here. This sure, this topic of conversation is around the money side of it, but it all comes down to your personal, um, quality of life, like less stress, less drama, less worrying, you know? So like imagine like when I tell people, when I talk with people about my packages and like how much it costs to work with me, a lot of times people are like, what? It's a lot of money, Jamie. And I'm like, yep, it is a lot of money. But how much money have you wasted by being not intentional with your time, by being completely unorganized, by being a shithead of a fucking boss, by not, people don't want to work for you. People don't want to work with you. Your wife doesn't even like you most of the time because you're such a dick, because you're so stressed out, because there's no balance in your life, blah, 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 the list goes on. How much money are you wasting? How much, how much is your happiness worth? How much is your peace of mind worth? And when I say it like that, they're like, oh, well, shit, yes. I will come up with the money. Let's work together. You know, I mean, and that's really what it comes down to. What do you want? Do you want it? Cool. Let's figure out how to get it for you. Because the decisions and the things that you're doing right now and that you've been doing over and over and over again are not getting you where you want to be, obviously, or we wouldn't be having this conversation. Brandon, yet people always look at the cost of the investment, but they don't see what they're missing out on. Absolutely very true, Brandon. I saw this thing the other day that said like change people always look at what they're giving up instead of what they're gaining like they don't look at what they're gaining from making a change and that's the same thing with making an investment because okay so you send out a thousand dollars how much are you going to get back you know what i mean it's like it's insane and nobody wants to think of that like oh i just i just charged a thousand bucks yeah but what if you make ten thousand or what if that gives you a peace of mind or what if that gives you the chance to hang out with your freaking children at night versus working all night long and being miserable. You know what I mean? Like people don't look at that. That's what I, that's why I wanted to record this day because like the mindset around that thousand dollars is like so much deeper than just the money in the bank and nobody realizes it. 
Angela. Very true. Never thought about a coach or mentor for my business. It's, um, what the cool thing about it is. So on that topic, a coach or a mentor for your business is most people don't think about it and they bang their heads against the wall for a really long time because most people also don't know that it's out there, that there are people like me and a lot of the people that I do business with that help business owners and individuals have better lives, to be really honest, um, to put it in a nutshell. They don't know it exists. And then when they do hear about it, they're like, oh, like, how is that going to help me? And it's actually, if you look across the board, some of the largest business owners have the, le the least, like the biggest CEOs have the least stress. And... They also all have life coaches and mentors that help them run their businesses the way that they want to and then still be able to have a life and all of those things. So it's like, it's actually a really intelligent decision to make. It's a, it's a very forward thinking decision to make. Um, you know, people have been doing it for a really, really long time, but it's just now beginning to be something that people are really talking about. I mean, like, shit, like the CEOs of, of um, Walmart pay for a life coach. She's, I guess she's more of like a performance coach, but they pay her to help them have better lives and businesses and be better leaders. You know, like Oprah, she has a life coach. She pays him a retainer so he can be there to kick her ass into gear and give her advice and give her insight and tell her what's up when she needs to know what's up. Like, she's smart. She doesn't need anybody to tell her what to do, but she needs somebody that can give her some insight and somebody that can hold her accountable and someone that can help her continue to grow. Because the moment that we stop growing and expanding is the moment that, like, little pieces of us die on the inside. Seriously. In a big, big way. So... See, it's funny. The reason that I love doing these lives like this, guys, and I I don't like how long they go sometimes, but the reason I like them is because as the conversation goes on, it gets clear that all of it's connected. Do you see that? Like we started the conversation talking about money. And then that money turns into mindset and turns into dollars in the bank, turns into time with your family, turns into balance and like life security, like all of the things play into each other and that's what makes me so happy you can tell I can't stop smiling like it makes me so happy because that's what nobody wants to talk about like it exists and it's all intertwined it's all intertwined and the topic of money is so taboo everyone's like oh my god you want to talk about money you must be an asshole like you must be obsessed with cash it's all you care about it's like I don't even think about it I know what my bills are. They come in the mail. I pay them. I don't stress over money. I don't think about it. I don't have, it's not, and it's, I'm not sitting here in a freaking mansion with millions of dollars, you know, behind me either. And like somebody fucking scrubbing my toilet. Like that's not the case. The fact is though, is that it is a mentality. It is a state of mind. Being at peace and being feeling abundant and all of that shit is a state of mind. And yes, money plays into it. Absolutely. It does. And anybody who tells you that it doesn't is full of shit. But anyways, yes, it makes so much. Oh, I want to see what all you said, Angela. Hold on. I'm going to pick you up. Yes. It makes so much sense. It's like crazy to me that I haven't thought about it. Like everything about it makes so much the knowledge you probably know and are able to help people with is amazing. Sometimes I feel stuck and it makes sense to be able to go to somebody that almost cares about my business as much as me for ideas. Dude, absolutely. Angela, that's the greatest part about it is like, for example, my clients, like I know what's going on in their business day to day. Like I had one of them text me this morning was like, dude, this is a clusterfuck. I'm seriously tripping right now. And I'm like, calm down. Like you're not tripping. You have a plan. Like follow what we wrote out. And like, you know, because I know what's going on. Or he can text me about an employee that's being a jackass. Or like a situation with a client or whatever. And I know his business very well. So I can support him in that. And I can tell him, 
whether he's being a dick or he's not, or whether he handled the situation properly or he didn't. And we learn from every situation, whether it was handled properly or not. Like there's a lesson in everything and having that person to like bounce that off of. I mean, I have that in my own business. It's, it's like golden. It's almost priceless. It's crazy. What, what's your favorite book right now on shifting your mindset? Oh, that's a loaded question, Emily. I am currently reading The Motivation Manifesto by Brennan Burchard, and I'm not going to lie, it's it's like mind-fucking the shit out of me right now. Like, and I've done a lot of really deep reading and mindset work around a lot of things, and like, I never really resonated with Brennan Burchard very much before, or at least I didn't think I did, and I'm reading this book, and I'm just like, holy shit. Like, he is taking, like, American history and, like, referencing it to personal freedom. And it's just, like, mind-blowing. I'm over here going, oh, my God. I can't even... It's taking me a while to get through it, honestly, because it is so deep that I I have to keep stopping and, like, taking notes or, like, pondering on it or rereading it. So that's a big one for me currently. Um... If you're, Emily, for um, money mindset, biggest shift for me was Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Here, I'll show you. It made a huge difference in my life. Like, big time. It should be right here, yeah. I reference it a lot, actually, because it just really, really helped me. This was the first money mindset book that I read, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. It's a really great book. Um... And it helped me just see things very differently. It helped me see where I was kind of being, where I was stuck in old ruts and I was stuck in old ways of thinking or patterns um, that were so devastating to what I was attracting and so devastating to the way that I was looking at situations. So it was a really big mindset shift for me. And it also has kind of like some lessons throughout it where it has you write stuff down. It's a really, really good book. Um... Even if you don't feel like you have a bunch of money mindset problems, read that book because it'll blow your fucking mind. It's really good. It's an easy read. Um, another, if you're just talking general mindset shifts, I would say uh, The Four Agreements is a huge book. I've read it multiple times and uh, I feel like I need to drink of water. I've read it multiple times and every time that I read it, I like grab new nuggets out of it. It is such an epic book. Um, it's just so general and so, but yet so detailed at the same time. And you can kind of like take, you can take a different nugget away from it every single time that you read it. The four agreements, the four agreements is something that people I know who have been doing mindset work and like really deep down personal development work for like 20 years still reference that book all the time. Like that's how epic it really is hmm here while I'm just taking you on a tour of my house I'll show you the book it's right here um let's see where are you there it is I got a lot of books to read I have a problem I like find books that I want oh it's stuck in the thing there it's in a group it's in a pack so it's I was going to show you the actual book but it's stuck in there see the four agreements. There's like, there's multiples to this. And there's a fifth agreement and I haven't read it yet. But here's what it, the book looks like. So, um, I mean, I have a bunch. Let's see, does it let me flip this? I'll just take a little tour. <laughs> yeah, so, Gary Vaynerchuk, God love him. He's amazing. I haven't read this one yet. I'm in the middle of this one. This is an amazing book. Brian Johnson's a genius. This is a great book. Girl Code I haven't read yet. Sex at Dawn I haven't read yet. Developing Irresistible Attraction. Amazing Law of Attraction book. Like, so good. Why won't this freaking focus? I haven't read this one yet. These ones are... I have not read. These are new. Um, Big Hearted Leadership's a great book. Alchemist is an amazing book. The Way of the Superior Man is really good. Dealing with Difficult People is really good. Delivering Happiness is about the people who started um, Zappos. It's a good book, but it wasn't easy for me to read. And I don't know why. 
I had a hard time with it. Like, I don't know why. It's good for culture, but I wasn't very, um, I wasn't super in love with, with it. Uh, five Love Languages. Every human being should read this book. Every human being should read this book with their spouse if they have one. Um, Relentless, I have not finished. This, so Tim Grover is the, he's a coach. And he was a coach to Michael Jordan. So this one is definitely on the list. How to Win Friends and Influence People is a freaking golden book. I've read it numerous times. Pulling Your Own Strings is a really great book. Read it many times. Nice is just a place in France. It's actually a pretty funny book. Oops, pulled the wrong one. This book's hilarious. How to Win at Basically Everything. This is definitely not for the men. Gentlemen, this book will not, you will not like this book. But ladies, you should read it. Um, and this was something I read when I was actually still in corporate world. Love this book. This is very, very enlightening. And then this book is close and near and dear to my heart, and I've read it a million times because it's so, 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 so good. And she's funny. She's really funny, actually. Oh, there's more books, Emily. Look. There's, they're everywhere. I have them stashed all over my house. Like that is, oh, let's just go back. So Warrior Goddess Training um, is amazing. It is, the girl who wrote Warrior Goddess Training was actually, her mentor was Don Miguel Ruiz that wrote Four Agreements. So um, it's pretty epic. And she's, it's very deep. It's very, very deep. And then uh, The Women Who Run With Wolves is a book that I pick up and just read randomly. Um, I don't, I've never just sat down and read in it for a really long period of time because it's really deep. And it, there's a lot of stories. So I sit down and uh, kind of just, I really just intuitively grab books. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. There's a lot of books that I'm like in the middle of and I've not finished them yet because... I don't read them every single day. I just read them as I feel need the need to read them. I just read something every single day. That's why I have them everywhere. Like Tribes is in the living room. Um, that's a good one. Big Magic I have on audio, Catherine. I don't even... I listen to Big Magic probably... I swear to God, I've probably listened to Big Magic like... I don't know, 75 times. <laughs> oh, here's another one. This is, this is the one I take with me when I travel all the time. Every human being should read this book numerous times. As Man Thinketh. Mind bending. Every time I open it. And it's so funny because I, I have given this book away as a gift to people a few times. And it's always fun for me because they're like, I'm like, did you read that book? They're like, no, I didn't read it yet. And I'm like, seriously, it's like, 37 pages. Like if you can't read that, I don't think we can have a conversation. <laughs> like, it's the easiest read. So It's like laundry day. I have freaking clothes everywhere because I'm in the middle of doing laundry, so they're all in piles. So ignore that. Um, my laundry room's, like, smaller than a closet, <laughs> so I have to do the piles in here. Um, but, yeah, this is an epic book. Go on Amazon, buy it. It's, like, $6. You'll love it. It is all about Mindset. Imagine that. Um, the way that you look at things. The way that you control things. The way that you control... Um, kind of like what I posted last night. Like that you control your own reaction and that's it. Um, it's just a really mind-bending book. Every time you read it, I promise, you'll you'll get a nugget of, of um, clarity for sure. So, anyways, I don't even know what time it is. Oh, it's noon. Um, I gotta go do some other stuff. <laughs> I did a bunch of shit this morning and then decided to do my hair and talk to you guys. And now I've got to go do some more client work and have afternoon full of phone calls. So thanks for hanging out. You guys are awesome. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know, especially like you said about money mindset. That's a big thing. That was something I've invested a lot of time and money in. So I'm more than happy to talk on the topic if anybody has any questions specifically. But 
Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.